Yo, 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 and welcome to the Leak Speak podcast, where we learn, educate, activate our knowledge. Uh, just to touch a little base on that, uh, a lot of us, uh, if we seek our knowledge or if we are actively learning a new skill or trade, um, one thing that we need to do is educate. Uh, the thing that separates us from you know, other species is our ability to pass down our wisdom and our knowledge. And so uh, activating that knowledge is simply uh, allowing it to soak um, in our DNA. And then from there, we, um, you know, we utilize it in whatever form, you know, uh, wherever it is presented. And so today I want to talk about this book by Carlos Castaneda, uh, The Art of Dreaming. And so I had a crazy dream last night uh, and I kind of I wrote it before I went to bed, um, just kind of talking about like, I hope you have sweet dreams type shit, like, but also just enforcing this idea of like uh, tonight's going to be a dream at night. And so. It was literally that like I, I think i had three different phases of rem sleep and so three different cycles of of dreams in which i i was so you know knocked out that you know i just was literally engulfed in the dream and so uh, here we are uh boy i just want to touch some of these um ideas that i read in this carlos castanada book and so kind of leak speaks just to get into like what i expect from myself and creating these podcasts um uh, are just taking the information I learned, the ideas, and utilizing them in a way that teaches, but also gives great topics for discussion. Um, and so, you know, without further ado, I want to introduce Carlos Castaneda. Uh, he is not on this podcast right now, but uh, as far as my knowledge of him, I was stumbling. Uh, I love to go thrift shopping for books because it seems like in a spiritual way, like you'll find exactly what you're looking for. And so Carlos Castaneda, uh, about a couple months back when I was in San Diego at a thrift store, he had a book called The Eagle's Gift, and the cover just was so standoff. And then you open it up, talking about Don Juan and the, the sorcery behind dreaming and the second awareness. And so I'm like, whoa, like this is deep. So let's take it, took it home. And I started to read it and kind of was like, you know, analyzing my dreams, but also kind of understanding like, yo, like this is very, uh, you know, pivotal. And so, um, yeah, so here we are right now. Um, and I just kind of want to talk about some of the things that, you know, um, I found important. And so here we are with perceive the energetic essence of things. Um, and so he was kind of talking about how, you know, they view wherever he is. I think it was Southern Mexico and whatever it dates back to their oldest generations. He was kind of saying like um, sorcery and I'll take I'll take it straight out the book. He was saying like sorcery is not sorcery that what we think, but it's like bringing awareness to your ability to have like a second perception almost or a second awareness um and so he says sorcery was the act of embodying some specialized theoretical and practical premises about the nature and role of perception in molding the universe around us and so um just and this is off the author's note so i i didn't go too deep into the first uh chapter just a couple page but so much stuck out to me um so yeah perceiving the energetic essence of things so, so sorcery as perception right so um we are, are are we're allowing ourselves to look beyond what we see and how we are molded into seeing certain things and we'll get there as we uh, but a big thing that stuck out was like you know i was riding with my sister today and and um you know we're riding down the street and i'm like these the the lines on the street means this the x's on the road means with the r's mean the railroad and so we're so conditioned to see things in such a uniformed way that we don't often step outside and see things like i said uh as an energetic essence like we live in in that i'll get here where they kind of talk about we live in survival mode where we're not even uh seeing things for what they truly are at its highest potential we're simply seeing things as what um, they are, you know, as it fits our description of, of the life that we live day to day. Um, and so perceive the energetic essence of things. So the true mastery of sorcery is called when you can truly see, um, meaning that you can perceive the energetic essence of things. So we see objects and we be like blanket, towel, wrapper, coin. Like that's what we see, you know what I'm saying? We'll instantly you know, assign a role to that. And so uh, a young Pharaoh said it best earlier. He said, words are just maps for your thoughts, right? And so you you say, I'm going to repeat that. Words are just maps for your thoughts. So you give yourself a word to map out, um, you know, exactly what 
uh, it is that you want to picture and form into your mind. And so that is because we live in this survival mode, which is uh, 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 our way of perceiving is one of predators way. Very efficient manner of appraising and classifying food in danger. This is not the only way to perceive. There is another mode, the act of perceiving the essence of everything uh, as energy itself. And so this reminded me of the Sphinx and the divinity represented by the head and the nature in the body. And so I was reading this in another book called um, Sacred Sexuality by Dr. Mortha Ashby. Um, and he says that he says, you know, the Sphinx uh, and everybody knows the Sphinx, which is the the lion uh, body, but then the human head. And so they say that uh, at our at our purest form, we are one with our body and one with our minds as well. And so, um, you know, I thought that to be very important. And, and even with this, our way of perceiving, like uh, we're like I said, the predator's way, which is the lion. We, we live in this life and we're, we're living through the way of a lion. And I'll take this to something that Chancellor Williams said, um, which and I'm sorry, this is going everywhere, but it's like a lion. And right. Chancellor Williams said, um, you know, the, the number one thing you want to do to a nation if you don't want them to thrive. Uh, is take away their ability to think and how do you take away their ability to think all you have to do is put them in a in a situation in, of living in which they're only forced to live in this predator's way be in survival mode so they don't have time to think i have to act off my instincts um and so this is big right um so what we want to reach ultimately the goal is to perceive the energetic essence of things um so what I kind of thought about with that is like when observation becomes intuitional perception. So we're no longer seeing with our eyes. We're seeing with our heart. We're seeing with our gut. We're seeing with our, you know, our, our spiritual essence. Um, and then this is called seeing. And seeing means you perceive energy directly. And so like even when I was dreaming, I woke up in the morning and I, I, there were people that I recognized in my dream. And I wanted to sign faces and, and you know, characteristics and ultimately attributes to these people. Right. So I, I see this girl and I'm like, I know her and the things that I was doing with her. I'm like, whoa, like one day we could possibly be doing those things. Like so. So what I realized was maybe it's not the same exact person, but but my mind kind of creates the person and shapes their face to express what it is that I need to be feeling in that moment. And so also I always thought, like, what if it's not the attributes uh, specifically or what if it's not the um you know, the physical makeup or the energetic essence of the person, rather uh, just the characteristics that they hold. Right. So what if it's just um, that she's a loving person or she's a, 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 a mean slash no hating person. Right. Um, and that's what I kind of thought about, like when it comes to these dreams. Right. Uh, so when you see somebody, you know, so uh, another thing uh, Young Pharaoh said, you know, I listen to him a lot. Uh, shout out to Young Pharaoh. But he says that you know, dreams, you're not supposed to take dreams at face value, you know, take the symbolism away um, from the dream and then, you know, uh, analyze it from the for the symbols. Right. Um, and so that, that was just powerful because I had a dream last night. Right. And I'm trying to take away the messages behind, you know, some of the things that were going on. And so um, and here's a crazy I just want to tell you this part. Right. So it's just it's just cool. It's interesting to think about. Right. I'm I'm a. Uh, I walk outside this building after a long day of what seemed like um, war zone, Call of Duty war zone. I was like playing real life with my friends in school. Right. So you can see how that would uh, lead to, you know, students. I mean, um, or, or like offic school officials being like, yo, we got to get these kids out to school because they're playing Call of Duty war zone inside the school. So I had that fear of like, OK, so as soon as I walk outside, I don't know if y'all know Wallow 267, but I see him with the eye of a snake and he's kind of like like a Buddhist monk kind of just mimicking the snake. Right. But behind him in the distance is like a really big anaconda. Right. Like super huge. Right. So I'm like, whoa, like Wallow kind of just walks off in the distance. And then like I get in a car somehow and I like drive around this building. Then I go to run over the snake. But the snake slicks it's like slips its tail through the car somehow. And like wraps it around both my feet and then i end up running over the tail and then i take the tail off my legs but it's just so crazy because right like 
the tail was literally wrapped on my legs like i felt that like damn near like somebody came in here while i was asleep to wrap my legs with something but then i remember taking it off taking it into the school and rinsing it off in the sink right and so i say that because what is the symbolism behind that what can i take away from that right how can i perceive the energetic essence of the situation or the encounter that i had the circumstance that i had and so moving forward how should we perceive the world this is a question that what the um don juan was asked by carlos Castaneda. he said everything is energy the whole universe is energy the social the social base of our perception should be the physical certainty that energy is all there is period right energy is all there is um and just to go off of that like it it is sometimes difficult for us to want to see that because we've been so used to living in this social base in this realm of um you know this predator's way of just acting on instincts not having to really think about life in a divine way in a spiritual way and even if those words don't connect with you then what is at the at the furthest most deepest fundamental uh, core of this life like what what is it right because a lot of us fear you know what that is because we weren't we weren't given the proper tools to handle that uh with a level head you know that emotionally that, that that strikes fear in us but intellectually if we can comprehend it in a way that was you know you know actual tool then we could see it for we could see life for what it is um and so everything is energy the whole universe is energy the social base of our perception should be the physical certainty that energy is all there is and that's that's real talk so first in order to kind of see the world like this uh we must make one realize we process our perception to fit a mold so like i said when you're driving on the street you see one line that's uh solid and then you see one line that's dashed you know that you can pass a car you know and so like we're looking for things like that we're looking for things that have that kind of have that um you know that that ease of like okay this is what this is and so that's why a lot of us are scared to do things that are that were you know that are uncomfortable to us because of that same exact reason we're looking for stuff to fit into a mold because it's it's sometimes scary to live in that unknown and so if you're listening to this right now strictly like just understand and bring awareness to your perception of how you see things right so i was reading this book by harry lorraine called the uh, mental magnetism course where he's like there's three steps and i might might butcher this but there's three steps to the way we um perceive understand and then believe about something so it's like at first you see something right you see a tv right you think black square flat and then from there you you just go and you do it so quick that you would just assign it like that so it's like tv boom uh you know what I'm saying remote boom like you don't even really get to actually look at the thing and, and and take it um you know which which is it it's a simple way for our brains to be more adaptive to the life we live in right if it took you a long time to really put these things together then you know it would just be harder for you to maneuver day to day but it's like how how does that mold that we live in restrict us from you know being or seeing um and it's just important to to think about so um so yeah and then the second you know so first we make one realize that we process our perception to fit a mold um and so just explaining that one more time um like i said when you're looking for things to make sense right um and that's one big thing with um you know one of the sorcerers was talking about how they view people in a certain way like human beings are this luminous egg and then at a certain point you know this that and the third um if you want to read the book we'll, we'll go deeper into that but he was saying like um but one thing you can't do and you got to be careful of is try to be as objective as possible you can't bring your own opinion to the matter you we want to speak a, a, a factual basis um just to give the most accurate um picture or visualization or the map like i said um words are you know uh your or are your maps th are, are a thought map oh my words are a thought map um and so you got to be careful when assigning your own uh, perception to things because it may shift what it actually is right so if you say four wheels you know 
um, I'm going to think instantly car, right? But you might be talking skateboard. You might be talking, right, right. So it's just about how the words can possibly misconstrue what we actually mean. Um, and so, like I said, make one realize we process our perception to fit a mold. And then second, um, we must guide one to perceive energy directly, right? So, um, and then there's a quote in here or like the conversation they were having where the dude was kind of, you know, playing devil's advocate. I felt he's like, yo, like I can't like I can't do that. But the the, the uh, teacher, Don Juan, was like, you can, you know, you can. But it's like getting past that, uh, that thinking that you can't. Um, and so, boom. Um, so I want to read some stuff out of the, the what's it called? The book just to kind of like, you know, I'll be highlighting stuff. So I want to what's it called. So um don juan was indeed an intermediary between the natural world of everyday life and an unseen world which he called not the supernatural but the second attention so the world that we don't perceive uh they call the second attention and then don juan contended that our world which we believe to be unique and absolute is only one in a cluster of consecutive worlds arranged like the layers of an onion he asserted that even though we have been energetically conditioned to perceive solely our world, we still have the capability of entering into those other realms, which are as real, unique, absolute, and engulfing as our own world. What what strikes me about this is the arrange like the layers of an onion. It's all one onion, but you peel back in layers. Shout out Shrek for giving us that uh, way back when. It still is real, these other worlds. So maybe in your dreams, you really go to different worlds, right? Um, and, and again, uh, just to reiterate, this is my thoughts on the book that is at hand. This is not, you know, fact, fiction. None of the, this is, this is ideas. These are thoughts. If you are listening to this, then this is for your mental exercise, right? We're stretching your ability to think about things that are outside of your realm. Um, and so, boom. Um, so I'm gonna keep going because this was important. This is the author's note. Don Juan explained to me that for us to perceive those other realms, not only do we have to covet them, but we need to have sufficient energy to seize them. Their existence is constant and independent of our awareness, he said, but their inaccessibility is entirely a consequence of our energetic conditioning. In other words, simply and solely because of that conditioning, we are compelled to assume that the world of daily life is the one and only possible world. Believing that our energetic conditioning is correctable, Don Juan stated that sorcerers of ancient times develop a set of practices designed to recondition our energetic capabilities to perceive. They called this set of practices the art of dreaming. Um, and so a lot of this, um, let me see if it's even important, right? So the art of dreaming, which is the, the title of the book, um, I, I got this right here on another occasion. Hold on, because I think it might all be important, so I might read it all. With the perspective time gives, I now realize that the most fitting statement Don Juan made about dreaming was to call it the gateway to infinity. I remarked at the time he said it, the metaphor had no meaning to me, right? So this is him saying, I don't understand, Don Juan. Tell me, tell me more. Explain to me more, right? But how can ordinary dreams be put to use? I asked, which is the Carlos Castaneda. He said, uh, Don Juan said, we always get tricked by words. He said, in my own case, my teacher attempted to describe dreaming to me by saying that it is the, the way sorcerers say goodnight to the world. He was, of course, tailoring his description to fit my mentality. I'm doing the same with you. So just like I was saying earlier about how sometimes we get misconstrued with our words, right? Our thought map doesn't lead. Uh, uh, the the individual that we are speaking to to where we want them to go uh, as far as like in their thoughts and expressing the idea so he says on another occasion Don Juan said to me dreaming can only be experienced dreaming is not just having dreams neither is it daydreaming or wishing or imagining through dreaming we can perceive other worlds which we can certainly describe but we can't describe what makes us perceive them Yet we can feel how dreaming opens up those other realms. Dreaming seems to be a sensation, a process in our bodies 
and awareness in our minds. And if you think about that, you know how you flinch when you feel like you're about to fall or, you know, you wake up and you can even remember the dream. Right. This is that that um, it's a sensation. It is something that we are that we have the ability to experience. Right. Um, so in the course of his general teaching, Don Juan thoroughly explained to me the principles, rationales and practices of the art of dreaming. His instruction was divided into two parts. One was about dreaming procedures, the other about purely abstract explanations of these procedures of these procedures. His teaching method was an interplay between enticing my intellectual curiosity with the abstract principles of dreaming and guiding me to seek an outlet in his practices. And so if anything, what I want this whole podcast of every all the 17 minutes thus far, the 20 minutes that I've been speaking, I would like this to be that I would like this teaching, this education, this learning uh, experience that we are sharing together to be a method uh, of enticing your intellectual curiosity. And I'll say it again. I would like this teaching to be a method enticing your intellectual curiosity with abstract principles of dreaming and guiding. Uh, So this podcast specifically referred, but then all podcasts in general will be to entice your intellectual curiosity with abstract principles. Um, And so I want to, I think there was one more thing I wanted to touch on here. Um, Okay, so maybe not, maybe not. But I just feel, uh, I feel like we can end it here. Um, Oh Lord. Chapman and the Prophets of Perception. All right, so to end it, let's end it off in this way right here, right? Um, Sorry for the brief pause there. So to perceive the essence of everything will make us understand, classify, and describe the world in entirely new, more exciting, more sophisticated terms. So the goal ultimately, um, in the more, okay, let me finish. In the more sophisticated terms to which he was alluding, were those he had been taught by his predecessors, terms that correspond to sorcery truths, which have no rational foundation and no relation whatsoever to the facts of our daily world, but which are self-evident truths for the sorcerers who perceive energy directly and see the essence of everything. Um, And so, yeah, I want to end it there. And I apologize for those brief pauses. Um, Moving forward, I expect to have just the idea is a little bit more acutely uh, lined up so we can um kind of just flow a little bit better but i loved the ideas that were touched and the connections to different books because those books as well will be uh spoken about on a podcast and so um i want to take uh three deep breaths as if we are in a meditation room And as seem as things seem strange to some of us and we don't know why we do certain things, we must do what we feel we must do um, because suppressing what we feel uh, is not giving the real us, so to say. Um, and I want to end there. And I also love to say I'm ending when I continue to spew. But leak speak is learn, educate, activate knowledge. And I hope today that you learn something new. And I hoped again that I enticed your intellectual curiosity with abstract principles. Tomorrow, I intend to do the same. Um, I'm not sure if I'll release this podcast strictly because I want to make sure that we have everything right. But I love the information that was given in this podcast. And so um, I thank everyone for coming out and listening. And I thank you for your 24 minutes and 11 seconds thus far. Um, the world is not what we know it and sometimes that can bring fear to a lot of people but it is also again um a journey to enlightenment to view the universe as what we as what we know deep down it is yet we run from in our daily lives and so as the lights turn off in my bedroom 
uh, may the dream world bring to me all the <laughs> all the symbolism I need to carry forward and may it bring you um, you know sweet dreams and in and, and then a peek into the the world the second awareness the world that is beyond our perception leak speak leak speak peace to you peace to one peace to all